So now that we've created our uh, mechanism character controller, we want to start copying code in and supplying that character controller with values. So let's copy in some values. Uh, we're going to copy in these variables here. And what these are is we've got the animator, which is a reference to the character controller. We've got a damping time, which is going to be used to set uh, sort of a delay on the, the time that we actually set this variable uh, direction in the animation controller. It's going to be delayed by 0.25 seconds. And that's good for if you're doing things like pivoting that you really want to use the previous frame's value on. And we also are going to have a speed value and horizontal and vertical uh, that's brought in from the control, uh, the control stick on your Xbox controller. So let's copy in the rest of this. We want to do, in our start method, we want to check if our animator component exists. And we want to grab it if so. So we're going to do that here. And then we're going to set our animation controller. So we've got that. We've set our animation controller. Now we want to supply it with some values. So in update, we're going to just basically supply it uh, values for those two floats that we call direction and speed. So run up this code real fast. And speed, this calculation here, it's basically the same thing as just taking a new vector two, supplying it with the horizontal and vertical, so making a vector out of that controller, and then just grabbing the square magnitude, which is just a little faster than actually taking the full magnitude. And what we want to do is we want to set those floats in our animation controller. So we want to set speed with the speed value, and we want to set direction with this uh, H value from the controller. So that's basically like the horizontal control stick. And uh, we should probably make this a lowercase d just for good coding practices. Great, so let's save this and have a look. Make sure we didn't break Unity. Great, no errors, that's awesome. So one thing we want to make sure too is uh, that we understand that this set float method here, all it's doing is it's taking this speed value here, which is the value in our script, and supplying it to the animation controller in right here. So it's just taking values from the script and putting them into our character controller. And those values we can use to sort of control these uh, parts of the state machine. All right, so let's give it a shot and see if it works. So make sure that our script is on there. We want to make sure that hopefully this animator component will just be set from this character controller when we hit start. So you can see right here the animator just came in and we still got our direction damp time set. Now let's try to actually move. Turn on the Xbox controller. Oh, we fell over. So there's a reason for this. Uh, when we create, <laughs> it looks like that game Quop. So the reason our character is flailing on the ground is because you need to actually set the capsule collider to freeze rotation in all of the uh, X, Y, and Z axes. So basically that's saying that you don't want the character to fall over and have the rigid body affected by the root motion of the animation. So we can have a look at our character. We can see them running around. And as we move the control stick, our character runs backwards and forwards. As you can see, we don't have a camera, so this is not so great. Uh, one thing you can do that's going to make the life a little bit easier is uh, there's actually a script that I grabbed off the Unify wiki. And if you go into the scripts folder, you'll see the scene view camera follower. So if you toss that on the beta character, we can set this so it's only in play mode. And what this is going to do is it's going to create uh, this ability for our scene view to track our character. So until we have a camera script in our project, it's going to be pretty pretty useful. So we're going to set the position offset. Uh, let's make sure that actually we'll turn it off. And now we can use this to position our character. So we're just going to do a 90 degree rotation in X. So we're looking straight down at the character. Uh, oops, that's 90 degrees away from the character. We do five, five units away, and we're going to do 90 degree rotation up. So basically just looking down on the character. And you can use this value to sort of zoom out a bit. And uh, we can make it orthographic or perspective. I think orthographic will be more useful here. So let's have a look at what this looks like. Probably make our gizmos just a little bit smaller. They're pretty huge right now. So as we run around, we can see our character from this top view. This will be useful for debugging until we actually get a camera into our game. Cool, so that's a good start. Going to go ahead and make sure that this is only in play mode, and that means that we can sort of rotate this camera around when we're just in our normal scene view. I think it's a good time right now to just have uh, a moment to think about like why we're building this camera script, because you might think, okay, so we've got uh, locomotion and everything, but there's like a lot of things that aren't so great about this, this locomotion right now. If you try to navigate these cubes, it's extremely difficult. 
uh, and you'd notice that from the fact that if you hold back on the control stick, it means the same thing as running forward, which is kind of unintuitive, and it's really hard to tell what direction you're moving. So the camera scripts and the locomotion scripts that we're going to be making in this tutorial are going to make a much more intuitive controller for you to work with and make your game feel a lot better and a lot more playable. All right, so now we're going to add a camera script to our character. So we're going to stop this for now. 